In this video, we're going to talk about one of our standard ASA monitors, the non-invasive blood pressure. Non-invasive blood pressure monitoring. And we're going to talk briefly about how it works, why it works the way that it does, and things like that. We're going to try not to make it too complex. Uh, now, so we normally place a blood pressure cuff around the upper arm where we have somewhere where we have, we have pretty strong arterial flow. And the reason why we do that is because our cuff, which I'm going to draw as a circle, this is going to be in our illustrations, our cuff has certain sensors in it that can detect tiny pulsations in our artery. And that kind of helps us spit a blood blood pressure out. So we'll get into that in more detail, but just know that our cuff has these sensors, uh, they're mechanical sensors that senses the pressure in our artery by, by our artery having tiny pulsations. So our artery, which I'm gonna draw here, our artery exerts a certain pressure against its walls. So I'm gonna draw our artery right over here. And that pressure is our blood pressure. So I'm going to draw this arrow. I'm going to draw this P big A here to represent the pressure exerted against the walls of our artery. And as you can imagine, that pressure in a healthy patient, let's say, is about 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. So if we were to put the cuff on our patient, but not tighten it if we kept the cuff on but, but loose and it's not turned on. Our pressure sensors can't really detect these pulsations from our artery because our cuff is loose. We need to somehow tighten or occlude our artery. So if we occlude the artery by inflating the cuff past the native arterial blood pressure, the pressure of the cuff will exceed the pressure of the artery in this scenario here. So let's draw what that would look like. So you can see here our artery is occluded now. And our cuff is pretty tight around our artery to the point where we are occluding our blood pressure or our, our artery here. So in this case, the pressure of our cuff represented by PC is way bigger than, or way greater than the pressure of our artery. And because I said this, this cuff has these, these sensors that detect the pulsations in our, in our arteries, if we were to try to map out what these pulsations would look like at this point, it would basically be minimal to non-existent. And the reason is because we're basically occluding this part of our artery. There's no pulses, there's no pulsation happening. So our, our blood pressure cuff can't really sense the tiny pulsations of the artery at this point. But as we release the pressure of the cuff, the cuff starts to pick up on these tiny pulsations. So we'll draw that right over here. So this is our artery, and you can see we're a little bit less occluded. So there's a certain amount of pressure being exerted against our cuff. And these are our sensors. So at this point here, the pressure of our cuff is still greater than the pressure of our artery. but not to the point where you can't detect any of the tiny pulsations that's going on in our artery. So like I said, as we release this cuff, if we map out the tiny oscillations or the tiny pulsations of our artery, as we release the pressure of the cuff, the cuff starts to pick up on these tiny pulsations. The more we release it, the more we detect these pulsations and they get bigger and bigger. So the point where these oscillations begin to start 
that these mechanical that these receptors or these sensors pick up this is our systolic blood pressure eventually we're going to get to a point where the pulsations of our artery or our oscillations reach a maximum point so let's see what that would look like So we have our artery over here, we have our cuff over here. There will be a point where the pressure of our cuff equals the pressure of our artery. And at this point, this is where the point of maximal pulsations are detected. So you have, as we start to deflate our cuff, we're getting more pulsations, more pulsations, until we reach this point right over here where we reach maximum pulsations. This is representative of our mean arterial pressure. And then through calculations using the mean arterial pressure, we have the systolic blood pressure. We can spit out or calculate the diastolic blood pressure, which can be gathered. Every, uh, every machine has a different algorithm on how they spit out the diastolic blood pressure or the systolic blood pressure. But the principle here is the same. These, this blood pressure cuff works by detecting changes, oscillometric changes, tiny pulsations in the arteries and releasing the cuff and mapping out these pulsations. And as you keep releasing the cuff, the higher the pulsations or oscillations that you get, that's more representative of our mean arterial, arterial pressure. Once we get to the point of maximal oscillation. Eventually, if you continue deflating the cuff, then the pressure of our cuff becomes less than the pressure of our artery, and you'll see these pulsations start to go down and become non-existent, because at this point, our cuff is much more loose, and the pressure in our cuff is way less than the pressure of our artery. So in summary, the non-invasive blood pressure monitoring works by oscillometry or it's oscillometric oscillometric bp measurements and what the purpose of this is to squeeze the artery so tight by inflating our blood pressure cuff that we can't detect any pulsations in our blood pressure cuff and slowly release that pressure eventually detecting small pulsations or oscillations in our blood pressure and once we start detecting those oscillations, then that is the point of our systolic blood pressure. If we continue to release that cuff, the pressure exerted against our, from our artery is going to be equal to the pressure exerted against our cuff, and that is going to be where the cuff senses these pulsations the most, and that is going to represent our mean arterial pressure. If we continue to deflate the cuff, then those oscillations decrease.